I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll kind of introduce polar coordinates. We know what Cartesian coordinates are so we'll begin from there and then we'll kind of correlate Cartesian coordinates to our new system which we'll call polar coordinate system. So to begin with in Cartesian coordinates we have x and y axis we represent kind of like this. I'm making a similar axis to represent the pod, uh, polar coordinate system also, right? So we'll kind of draw a parallel between the two as we move along. In Cartesian coordinate, we say this is the point origin. In polar coordinate also, we have one origin. Now, in Cartesian coordinate, we say when you move towards the right-hand side, this is called the x-axis, right? So let me write down x-axis here. So it is called x-axis. In polar coordinate system, we call this as a polar axis, right? So let me sketch one here and we say, well, this is called the polar axis, right? So, so we call that as the polar axis. Now, origin is kind of a common term which we can use here also. We say this is origin and we call that also as origin but we give it a special name and we call that as a pole right so the, think about a pole which is fixed here at this point so so this point will be referred to as as the pole or as origin also at times since we are so used to calling this word origin right but strictly speaking it is analogous to the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system, correct? So that is how you should be looking it at. So the x-axis parallel in polar coordinate system is the polar axis. Now when we talk about polar coordinates, we represent every coordinate in the form of x and y. So let's say we have a point here. We say this coordinates of this point P are x and y where x is the distance you move along the x-axis. So this horizontal distance basically is x and then the vertical distance is y and that is what you get. So well, let me complete this Cartesian coordinate system. We say this is our positive y-axis. Now since we have something positive and something negative, I'm saying this is my y-axis. So we represent negative of y in the opposite direction of y. Uh, so we say this is negative of y and negative of x also in the opposite direction of positive x and we say that is negative x. So you can kind of label this at, as minus x and minus y. However, uh, it is not very important to write negative x, negative y. Most important is that you should write zero uh, as the origin, or you can say capital letter O, x on the x-axis with an arrow and y on the y-axis with an arrow. So that is kind of a must, but this is like uh, derived from a very basic definition. Uh, that is x and y coordinates. So when I say a point P is x and y, then I'm saying that x is the distance from the origin towards on the x-axis. If both are positive to the right, y is positive upwards. If y is negative downwards, right? Similarly, we can have all the points covered up in this plane using these two points. Now, let's look into this idea of connecting the point with the origin. So, what do you get? You get a line segment, right? We get a line segment OP. Now, let's get back to trigonometry for a moment. So in trigonometry, we're talking about uh, a line which has a distance and we can also say, well, this line makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis. Now you've learned how to connect these x and y's with the angle theta in trigonometry. So here's some basic about trigonometry, which we'll get into, and then we'll move to the polar coordinate system. So we say, well, in trigonometry, we learn what SOCA is. Let me write down that term. Uh, 
so cut over sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse tan is opposite over adjacent so I, I'm just giving a brief uh, review of what we have learned already so from this right triangle if I draw a perpendicular we know this is a right triangle we can relate x and y with this angle theta and the length of this uh, hypotenuse for the right triangle let me call for the moment this as r in that case what is x equals to well we can say cos theta is equals to adjacent side over the hypotenuse right so which is x over r in this case so that gives you the value of x as equals to r times cos theta how about sine theta in this right triangle where point p is x y so in that case sine theta is opposite side which is y units of length hypotenuse which has length of r and rearranging this we get y equals to cross multiply so we get y equals to r times sine theta perfect now you can use pythagorean theorem to find r x square plus y square is r square right so you could do that or well, here also if you do square of x square and y square you get r square cos square theta plus r square sine square theta let me show it this way now so if i do x square plus y square I get square of this which is r square cos square theta plus r square sine square theta and if I take r square common we get cos square theta plus sine square theta and as you know cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1 right so so this is equal to r square correct so we can write down how this distance r is related with x and y so we can say well r square is equals to x square plus y square is it okay so so even using trigonometry a bit about x and y we can get r so what we have done in this case you will see that we have converted x and y these two parameters x is one parameter which is we call independent variable y the other one in terms of r and theta so when we convert x and y to r and theta we can actually plot them in terms of r and theta also that's the whole idea now plotting in terms of r and theta the same point uh, will be or can be done on a different system which is polar coordinate system so that kind of relates the two right so in a polar coordinate system we have now the coordinate point same point we are saying this is my point p now instead of writing x and y i'm writing this point as r and theta i'm writing this point as r and theta so that becomes the polar coordinate now in this what is theta well that's a good question now to find theta let's get back to this so we talked about sine and cosine and we found what r is well so we know what r is so let's write down what r is so r is we said r square is x square plus y square r i mean r square is x square plus y square so r is square root of x square plus y square is it okay now for the time being I'm considering this to be positive right since we are talking about a distance since we are talking about distance we are taking a positive value for the time being okay we'll consider negative distances soon right okay so I don't want to really complicate matters at this stage so r that length is x square plus y square and uh, now the question is how to find theta well if you use tan you know y over x this ratio is tan theta so i could write tan theta as equal to y over x so theta is tan inverse or arc tan of y over x correct so we get this value of theta is that okay so that's the value of theta so if i use another system where x axis is replaced by a polar axis and we know 
angles in trigonometry also we learn if we are going counterclockwise counterclockwise means positive angles right so we'll keep that counterclockwise as positive angles we can actually show what theta is so in our case theta is tan inverse of y over x so if we go counterclockwise kind of like this we can find what this theta is right so we can write down this theta which is also given here tan inverse from coordinate system y over x and if i draw a line from the pole to the point p whose length is r then i again get to the same point p now this coordinate system has changed you see the link between the two so we are talking about a coordinate system now which is called polar coordinate system in every point here on this coordinate system is being referred to in terms of not x and y anymore but in terms of distance from the pole so r is distance from the pole which is equivalent to the origin right and theta is we say the angle which it makes from the axis polar axis so that is the angle of rotation from polar axis is that okay so that is how we get our new system which is polar coordinate system correct so if the angle is positive you go counterclockwise if the angle is negative you go clockwise direction to reach the point so it is very important to understand that we have just one axis here right and a rotation along this axis now just as we have few terms there we can call this as the initial arm right as in angles we say initial arm so initial arm is the polar axis and this will be called as terminating arm or terminal arm right so that will be called as the terminating arm and always r theta is going to represent a segment not a ray in polar axis is a ray right so it just moves on and on uh, like x axis correct any point is fixed distance away right so so that is how it is and we call these as radial coordinates right so so we'll refer to them as radial coordinates r and theta from now onwards right and in this video you also understand what is the link between these two because we'll keep going back and forth for a few videos so that you get clear idea of what we are talking about right so there are different names to this angle theta we may refer this angle theta as a polar angle right that makes sense right so it is polar angle at times we may call it as azimuth and sometimes also as argument right so when you use functions and especially the complex numbers we may call them as arguments right? so these are different names for theta right so these are different names of theta so i hope with this you get some idea what a polar coordinate system is and uh, how to represent any point on a polar coordinate system and you have a link between the well-known or understood Cartesian coordinate system by you with the new polar coordinate system now in the following videos we'll take a few examples to represent points from Cartesian to polar at this Cartesian system we also call this as a rectangular system because it kind of forms a rectangle right so so or you can say from polar to rectangular system rectangular to polar coordinates something like that so we'll do those videos we'll also look into equations and sketching few curves major advantage of polar coordinate system is that you can very easily sketch curves with polar coordinate systems which kind of is difficult with uh, the Cartesian coordinate system let's I hope uh, you have understood the basic concept let's move on 
and do some practice questions. Thank you and all the best.